now let's go in detail on the design of the Skoda Superb, which is, as I said, my favorite. We see a strong power dome on the front hood. And here in the top trim level L and K, we also have those special headlights. You can get it optionally for the lower trim levels. Um, they have the 3D look going in with those tiger claws and also the crystal look inside, inspired by Czech handcrafters. It's really beautifully done. And you know, we've told you with the, our earlier review, even BMW customers say, oh, maybe the next time I'll buy a Skoda because this Opel looks that great. Also in the side profile, we got a spectacular outline with those carved lines. And this is, like I said, Ellen K trim rules has here low and inclement as well in the detail, but I would not go for the top trim level. I'll tell you later on the interior why. And these ones are 18 inch rims. This two color scheme, very beautiful. I'm not so into silver and gray cars, but this one here, the combination really looks very classy very sharp coupe style line ending and uh, we'll have a surprise here with the hatch we'll show you also with the interior and you see those very strong dropping line above the door handles continues all the way to the rear in the rear the all new generation of the Skoda Superb is broader than ever and it is also accentuated due to the tail lights which are drawn all the way around here and here, the same counts as for the front lights. You get this crystal look here in the top trim levels or optional for the middle trim levels. And yeah, in this case, I would definitely go for this look here and um, maybe have this option then. But you know, at some time, you can actually also spend some money on this car because the brace price is relatively low. Inside, very solid door handles. I like that, and also when you close the door, nice sound. This is really premium quality. Then we got the bright interior here, LNK top trim level, which is unfortunately real leather. And also, I checked it in the price list. The um, Alcantara leather option is also with real leather on the outside. However, there are also cloth seats with the middle trim levels, ambition and style available. You see here form of the seat is actually very comfortable not too tall though and then we got a high class steering wheel as well and you can get some piano veneer here um, but also for example matte aluminum is available we've shown you that one in the other review we have from the superb as well and when i've taken a seat here it's really luxurious no matter what and skoda is definitely premium now at least with this car and got a very spacious surrounding to me, it's the most spacious surrounding here in this three-car comparison test. It's um, you sit down and have so much space in every part of the car, actually. And the only thing, you know, for very tall drivers, when they're about 190 meters, those premium seats here are not that high, so my shoulders are actually on the level above the seat. And um, they're also not that sporty, but in general, still comfortable for tall people. If you want sportier seats, and also low for the actually more suitable for tall people it's better actually to go for the octavia rs because there you got those sports seats these ones are focused on comfort here also got some um, adjustments right here everything electrical in this top trim level lumbar support in the front and also a memory function for the seats cockpit overview here they weren't as daring as they were with the exterior it's rather conservative but again, very classy and also already in the lower trim levels. Here you get, you know, some more fancy stuff then. But in general, well, we've got the steering wheel that isn't that small. So it's again, more on this comfortable aspect and rather horizontal lines, very clear lines and everything is, you know, has a good overview. You don't have too much buttons. Everything gets clear, kind of very fast. The instruments, 
classic analog style and even with a little bit of vintage touch here in the LNK because we got the those bright backgrounds and the round backgrounds with the instruments. And well, I would go for the matte aluminum style here. We've seen it in other cars here already um, because this black veneer, I'm not really a huge fan of that one. And um, then let's take a look at the infotainment system. You see in the general overview, we have this digital analog clock, quite funny, but very elegant style here again, I think. And um, then if you activate anything, well, if you push here first, this, for example, the media, everything is with those hotkeys, and that's quite good because you then can very fastly access, um, for example, your phone connection or also um, with, with the radio. And um, GPS is at the right side here. And I really like the GPS here, this is the biggest one that is available. And you see the reaction times are actually quite fast, and you can also use it um, iPad alike. And this one are the buttons that are on the touchscreen here, you can put the new destination then. Then, for example, you see those information about the consumption. I've told you also will be out with this petrol engine 10, 11 liters or something like that. And there are also several things you can adjust then. By the way, it's also possible to use it that way, iPad alike. And um, Smart Link is also available. Then you have this smartphone connection with Apple CarPlay, Mirror Link or Android Auto that is here available too. Um, what else is quite nice? Um, yeah. I mean, not sure if if you would use it, but this one got a TV tuner here optionally, so we can watch some skiing. And, and it's also sound with it. <laughs> uh, funny thing is, there's not you know, a turning off switch for that, but the easiest way is if you go to media, then it, the TV tuner is turned off. And when you start driving, then it will also um, be turned off. But the sound, you can still hear the sound with a, with a, from, the, from the TV then. Let's move further to the front. Everything here has been fixed even more, so we know we know some Volkswagen where this was a little bit loose, but this one has improved in quality and also the speed, um, how the display is working, very nice. We've got the heated seats here and you can then move on to the touch screen again and also use this button for the vented seats and you can have the vent and heating at the same time. That is actually also quite cool and luxurious. So good overview here. This is the strength of the vents. And um, well, four separate climate function, I think it's one of the best that's available here because it's very easy to control and has still good quality. DSG dual clutch transmission, six speed and also very elegant design definitely. And you have separate buttons here. Most important is the driving mode. And there you can change different modes. I can also soon show you on the screen here. Um, you can press the button there or then also go to the touch screen. And um, this one, for example, is for the, you let the car roll, sail. This one sets the dynamic chassis, which is optionally um, for the middle trim levels and include in the LNK trim level. Um, this one is a little bit harder than sport, it's a little bit stiffer than there isn't too much of a span between, but you do realize the difference definitely. But general suspension will be very good, I can tell you. And the rest here electric park brake, everything is again, you see, everything is very exact, so really nice build quality. And one short look at the rear view camera, we see it right here. Well, the solution could actually be better, I think it's better with the Passat. If you go in the front, then it gets deactivated again, but you also have, have those sensors here. Skoda is famous for huge storage spaces, and we can see them everywhere, starting at the inside of the doors, then moving on to a very huge glove box, and you see, you see how even everything is. And again, a lot of space here, can be cooled as well. Then let's move on here. You see, in some other premium cars, this wasn't as good from the build quality we've seen here. And see how smooth everything is sliding back. That is really superb, as the car says. USB port, 12 volt power supply, aux in. And then you can put your mobile phone here that the car antenna is supporting the, um, the, you know, the, the connection of the mobile phone. Beverage holders in here. Mm, I've seen better ones here because they cannot be you know, adjusted. You can also close that one and then huge space here under the armrest. Again, it can be cooled right here. Nice thing as well. 
in the soft ground and um, you can even flip it up, I'm not sure. Maybe from a mobile phone, that could also be some, well, interesting stuff here. <laughs> and one more for your glasses here. Again, look at how smooth everything is sliding and I can just say this car has a better build quality than some of the cars that have double the price. It is really one of those cars that is best thought through, for example, also from small uh, trash bin, you can see it right here, and um, here. Yeah. Those details are actually what Skoda customers love. Besides the trash bin or the torch in the trunk, there's also always the ice scraper behind the fuel cap, and well, it's a good place to store it, and again, really a clever solution. And about the ambient light, you can see it right here in the front and also at the sides, at the inside of the doors each. And it's really interesting, because you can see here, for example here, you can change the brightness. That's totally dimmed, that's fully empowered then. And you can also change the color right here, for example also to just plain white. Green is Skoda green, or you can also pick blue for example. I really like the blue. I mean it's more this kind of Volkswagen style because it also fits with the Volkswagen logo but still I think it's very beautiful. Also included for the rear passengers by the way. Let's get in the rear compartment and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's a very round shape around here and again everything fits perfectly to each other. This is really high build quality. Quite easy entry and I got the seat as I would be driving right now and still I got really a lot of knee space. Even the, you know, the using of all the space available is even then the best in all of the three cars and so you really get the most space here. <laughs> I could fit another person here just in front of my knees. Um, this doesn't have the panoramic roof and that leaves me also enough headspace um, even here in the sedan. And the seating position is not that far laying back. It's very comfortable for such a sedan. So to me, the most comfortable seating position here in the rear compartment. So if you're traveling with adults here, with tall adults in the back, this car is then the way to go. And here again, we got some quite nice details. For example, we also got the sunshade we can put on. Um, but you see it when I close the door. That also here, the, those windows, they are a little bit darkened in the rear. That is also um, against sun and well, gives you a little bit more of a privacy. And there's optionally also separate climate control for the rear available, even seat heating. But that is again optional. And last but not least, we also have the function to put the seat in the front from here actually or from the side. And um, that offers you a great luxury position here. Maximum legs with here. You can really use that one as a chauffeur car, no problem. And you can see here, you can attach an iPad here for rear infota uh, infotainment system. Then. Very nice for your mobile office is this one here. Separate power plug, this is the German version you now, and 12 volt and USB for the rear passengers. Let's take a look at the trunk. You can use that key, beautifully done. By your word structure, you can press the button here or also go for that one here. Electric opening is optionally available. And this is the best trunk here, best loading area you can really use. I mean, look at this one. You don't have a separated one. It's more than a hatch. And if you compare it to the estate, we also have the Skoda Superb Estate in review. Well, here you already got so much space. It's really incredible and nice. Um, details you have there as well. Let's start with flipping the rear bench. You have buttons here on, on both sides and you can release it right here. And then you got an even loading area. Absolutely no problem. By the way, it was quite interesting. The right one, everything flipped with the left one didn't uh, do anything so far. That's quite interesting concept. Then you see a really huge loading area. And you know, Skoda has this marketing slogan, simply clever, and in this case, I must say, it is actually true. You got those nets where you can put your trolleys under it. Also, this one's here, you know, there's an interior package available where you got these practical nets. And for example, also about this one, you got the torch here, separated here, LED. And you see, as soon as I put it in, then 
the light there gets activated again. Nice solution. Let's start driving with the Skoda. First I'm going to tell you something in general about driving this one later on then how it compares to the others. And if you just look at it as a single car, the first thing you realize, and also in comparison to older Skoda cars for example, this one here is so silent. It really makes you relaxing instantaneously. It's you start the car, start driving, especially here with this petrol engine, that doesn't make any noise at all, it, it seems. Then when some cars are passing you, it's just like you can't even hear them. The suspension, we got the DCC here, the adaptive one. And um, well, that's someone next to me hearing some music now, some very stupid music. What about the DCC? Well, um, the thing is, uh, you can get it optionally for about 1,000 euros and um, it is included already in the L and K trim level, it's the top trim level. And with the top trim level, of course, you get some more equipment then, but um, I would usually go for middle trim level and then pick the stuff you really want to have, like for example, the DCC. It's about 1,000 euros extra for the middle trim levels. I'm right now in the eco mode, so-called eco mode, and um, I do like driving that one in everyday driving because this one enables the sailing. So the car is just rolling when you leave the throttle untouched and that really can save you some fuel. And of course that's important on the, on the long run. And everything else from the settings is rather set on comfort basically. And that is of course also good for everyday driving. And Oh, again, it's almost like riding an air suspension. That good is the suspension really, but it's not an air suspension. It's just the adaptive one here. But as I said, it's really, really good. So from a riding perspective, it's one of those cars where you start driving and say, okay, of course I'll buy this car, why not? I mean, then about the steering, it's also generally set on comfort. It's not really stiff and also when the car is just moving a little bit around, you feel it's shaking just a little bit, but not too much. But definitely not the sportiest ride in the standard setup. Also when you don't go for the DCC, the dynamic chassis control and pick the standard suspension, then you also can expect a rather comfortable car that is really set on this emphasis and not on the sporty ride. However, you can also change that when I go. Well, there's also a comfort mode, as I've shown you earlier. Then there's a normal mode where you don't have this sailing effect that hard. And then let's test what about the sport mode. We get a kind of little bit of preload for the RPM then. And the gears will turn up higher. And we can also see how that really changes the suspension because about the adaptive suspensions they're actually really big difference. Sometimes we got cars where we have a wide span of comfort until sport. Sometimes it doesn't really make such a huge difference. You hear that with the throttle when I'm pushing the throttle now, immediate reaction and I also just need a little bit of <laughs> throttle pushing and the car is really accelerating harder than before. Well, about suspension, it is still very comfortable at the moment. Do I really feel a big difference? Steering wheel wise, mm, I would say it's a little bit. It's still set on the comfort, definitely. But as the engine performs very well, it's also fun to move it fast. Uh, maybe you've seen it from my steering. As the steering needs, well, it does need some, some steering way. It's not the most progressive one, definitely. Uh, so, well, fast cornering isn't that much fun with it. The engine, very sporty, very direct it feels. However, now, hmm, I'm not so sure about the steering then. That would, could be a little bit more progressive, for example, as we know from the Octavia RS, that would be even more fun than for sure. Yeah, the sport mode is not really the best one for everyday driving. So we change back again. Or we can go to individual, as I've seen, shown you before. And 
um, let's see how that does make the change. And there we can set, for example, the DCC from sport to normal and back again. That is possible, for example. Um, or maybe I also go for the um, for the engine now and set it to eco, and we don't have this, you know, this overboost. And um, let's see, we can then in the individual mode switch from sport to the normal mode and to the comfort mode back again. Maybe we feel the difference there, but, but in general I can really say about the engine. There you can really feel the difference in the sport mode, but the suspension wise it really stays comfortable. But I mean, for this class here, that's totally the right decision of Škoda to go for this comfort ride mode. Now I got the engine set to normal. I got suspension on sport. Let's maybe do some right-left tests here. Well, the car performs good, definitely, but needs some steering way. And um, we can test that one then with, with the comfort soon. As soon as the traffic light goes to green again. And, yeah, well, basically, you have a lot of parameters you can set there, but you know, basically, you'll be just fine with the eco or, or, the, or the comfort mode, definitely. For the steering wheel, I also didn't feel such a difference then. Well, it says steering here, I can do it to sport steering. I've just been standing still. Let's see if it makes a difference when things feel normal now. No, I don't really feel it. Maybe now when we drive. So let's put DCC on sport and the steering on sport. See how that performs. Uh, guys, I'm really not so sure if there's such a difference. I can feel it, I can't feel it, it's really a big difference. But what is good that this, the uh, suspension itself is adaptive, so it will also generally work pretty well in, uh, in the riding. But you know, you will also be just fine with the standard suspension. When standing still, we got the start-stop mode that is activated and so it's all completely silent. Sound insulation was also one of the big things they have worked with the worked on with the new generation here and we really do feel that. I got a quite good overview to all of the sides and I still feel quite comfortable and also agile enough. So it's not that you think okay it's the biggest car in the segment and you don't feel comfortable in them all because you've got a huge uh, huge thing on the road there. So that's that's also still fine. The engine is the strongest one in the test. DCC Comfort. I'm not sure. The strange thing is that when I go to the individual mode, it sometimes resets the settings. That is a little bit annoying, I must say. So, sport again. Get the preload from the engine. Yeah, um, yeah, actually, I got a little bit more steering input there. That does work, actually. A little bit director. I like that. So, let's try it again. With the new ah no no it's just really because the road is bumpy oh wow really got the damaged road here but the suspension is doing that very well okay going to comfort mode again yeah now as the road is bumpy then you feel the difference wow when we then switch to the comfort again it's like riding a carpet but you know we have had suspensions where the span is actually a little bit wider, but here, yeah. yeah, but the engine, it doesn't really fit the car very well, so I would just pick the normal mode probably, then you'll be rather fine with the car. I really like the engine by the way, it's this 2 liter turbo petrol engine, 220 horsepower, 6 speed DSG, so let's see if we can get in there. You know, um, the difference from DSG to the Passat is that the Passat has 7-speed DSG. So it's also interesting in the comparison. So although the Passat has less horsepower, it got one gear more. But in general, the dual clutch transmission, it shifts really totally smoothly. And you almost don't feel the shifting process when you're not, when you're not hammering a throttle. It's like going up and um, you don't feel it, really feel it. It's really incredible. 
However, you know, there have always been some concerns with the durability of the of a dual clutch transmission. However, you know, in my closed circle, I didn't hear any complaints about that so far. And well, it is actually fun to ride this strongest engine here of, here of, of all, and um, I can recommend it. However, about consumption, this one here will score about at least 11 liters or more kilometers. So, yeah, maybe that is too much for you then. We can also do some like, small acceleration tests from the, from the low speeds. Let's say we go maybe 30 to, to 70 or something like that. Something that it, well, let's say 20 to 70 that happens in the city, maybe. Let's go now. Well, that's 80. Whoa. <laughs> well, for a small petrol engine, really good performance. Can't argue about that. That is really nice. And you know, when we weren't in the sport mode, so it took a little bit to shift down, we can do that again in the sport mode. And you can also see the difference there. Let's say starting from 20 now. Then let's go. 60. You saw there, it, the car didn't have to sh shift down first. That was immediate acceleration and uh, actually also a quite impressive one.